2 Timothy 2, 15, God says, study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word. When we divide the word rightly, we have to understand time is a day of death. And in time, there are two turning points that are of major importance. And the one is the flood and the other one is the cross because the ground was cursed. And you can only curse the ground with water and fire. And both these curses were lifted by God. No man could lift these curses. Here in Genesis 6 is the biggest turning point that would take us unto the next turning point, which is the cross. So as I prophesize and say, if you go through the water, if you go through the fire, it will not touch you. This is why the church is a world without end. So when the Bible talks about the end of the world, it's not the end of our world. The world is the governments that govern in certain times on the earth. Here in Genesis 6, we are talking about the end of the first world. Second Peter 3 tells us all about this. He says, the second epistle, beloved, I write to you both in to stir your pure minds by the way of remembrance. This is all about, guys, we need to understand times and seasons that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Now the prophets came and they said, oh, what time are we writing for? And remember when the prophets came in, when Israel wanted a king, then the prophets came in and warned them about Babylon and what is going to happen until 70 AD. So in Revelation, he says what the prophets warned about is now over, but we'll prophesy again and this will carry the testimony of Jesus. So we need to check out what kind of prophecies we are receiving because everybody is now prophesying the end of the world. What world are you talking about? Because the Bible talks about the end of that world. He says, Christ now at the end of the world brought the final sacrifice. And then he says, knowing this first, they shall come in the last days. What is last days? Well, every end has last days. The Bible talks about the last days when God doesn't speak by the prophets anymore. He says in Hebrews 1, He's speaking in these last days through the sun. Whoa. Now, these people have become scoffers because they said, oh, no, man, these things are not true. So even today, everybody is, when is the Lord coming? Because that is going to be a final end of a certain period. But this period is not really described in the Bible. And this is the book that was in the hand of the angel, which was none else but Jesus Christ himself, Revelation 10, the book that is eaten and we have to be manifested on the earth because in the fullness of time, God manifested at the end of time, man will manifest God on the earth. Now they say, where is the promise of his coming? These people were waiting for the destruction of Jerusalem. They are in the time that the New Testament was written. And they were like, when is he coming? When is he coming? Because he said he's going to come back. The returning of the Son of Man is to finish what he did on the cross. And the coming of the Lord of glory is for the victorious church. Two time periods. He says here something. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They are mixing times that you cannot mix. The first father was Abraham. And the beginning of creation, not even Adam was born. It was right in the beginning, which were followed by six days or perfect periods of time in the realm of light, which is a day of light. And Adam was only made on day six. And Moses wrote Genesis 2,500 years after Adam. So these people are confused with time. And now it even goes further. And he says, everything continue as from the beginning of the creation. These people are willingly ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. That was the creation. And that the heavens and the earth standing out of water. Please note, not the heaven the earth standing up out of water. And this is what we read about now in Genesis 6. God said, my spirit will not forever strive with man. So God 
destroyed the God of love, destroyed the first world in order to work his purposes in Christ, in order for every man to have an opportunity to receive the gospel because the gospel was now preached. Jesus descended and Preach the gospel to those that are in prison that they could be judged according to the living. So in Christ, everything in heaven, everything on earth and everything under the earth came together. It is three realms that comes together in Christ. And he says, when we are baptized, it is like in the days of Noah. So what is happening with us in Christ we have to take it back to Genesis 6. Now he says, These people are willingly ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in water, whereby the world then was overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved for fire against the day of judgment and perdition. So he's now talking about the two major turning points in the Bible. The one was with the end of the first world and the other one was the end of the second world. Now between these are generations and we need to discern between generations, seasons and worlds. So the first world was before the flood, the second world was just before the cross and the final world is the world of the church. A world is when heaven authority works with the earth to form a world. So spirit word is the world of Quibus van Rensburg and spirit world. But the earth is terra firma. It's, you cannot mix it up. So when the Bible says that before the foundation of the world, Christ was crucified, that happened in Abraham. It's not the earth. We need to understand what is the end of the world, the end of time and the end of the earth. He says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Now, these are all laws, spiritual principles set in place so we can understand. And this also determines the way we read the Bible with the natural mind, the spiritual mind or the eternal purposes of God. So the natural mind, a day in the natural, my days are 24 hours, so are yours. But the spirit working in time is a thousand years. But the eternal purposes of God set in place in Genesis 1, a thousand means perfect. So we cannot change those words with millennium because millennium means thousand. But thousand in the Bible does not mean millennium. When he talks about a thousand years, it means a perfect time. Now, the next verse is crucial in understanding these turning points. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. God is not a thief. It's a day. A day is a 40 year period in generations. We can read the Bible in pure history or we can read the spirit word and understand all these things. And this is where we also have the application of the spirit in our life cycles. But then there's the eternal purposes of God. And we need to know that in the spirit, times overlap and intersect. So there is with a two biggest turning points, which was the flood and which was the cross. There was always an overlapping because here it says, it's not that God doesn't know what he's doing or he's not on time. He is not slack, but he doesn't want us to perish. For God so loved the world that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So in time, there are two major days which correlate in Genesis 1 with day 1 and day 4. And it is both days that brought light in. 
The first is the flood. The first world is now over. Now this new day has an evening, a morning and a daytime. And the new day started in Christ where he says, today I have begotten you. You are my son. And Revelation says, he has made everything new in Christ. It is not circumcision or uncircumcision, but a new man in Christ, a new creature in Christ. But we have to be in him. So we have to jump right into this big change, which was the flood. And all through archaeology, they have discovered that there must have been a flood somewhere. And every old ancient religions we read the story about the flood. The evidence of the flood is all over the world. But what happened in the spirit realm is much bigger. And everything mentioned in these next chapters, from chapter 6 to chapter 9, is all about this big change that's coming and then dealing with the Noah generation. So this next section is all about the end of the first world and the generations of Noah and setting the pace for the new day to come. Mm -hmm.